Hi, my name is Laura Egan O'Brien and I'm the Marketing Manager for the College of Engineering and Architecture here in UCD. I'd like to sincerely welcome you to the UCD Open Day. I hope you find it useful and it helps you on your journey to discover what you want to study at university. For our architecture talk today, we have UCD lecturer and head of subject, uh, Professor Hugh Campbell. He's going to give you an overview of our undergraduate architecture course here in UCD, um, the kind of subjects it offers, the concept of learning by doing, and the importance of the design studio. So I'm going to hand you over now to Professor Hugh Campbell. Hello, and thank you for your interest in coming to study architecture at UCD. I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about what architecture is about, the career of an architect, what that might involve for you. And then I'm going to say a bit more about UCD, the course in UCD, the structure, the kind of activities you're going to be involved with. And hopefully I'll be able to give you a reasonably complete picture and you'll come away uh, knowing quite a bit more about UCD architecture and you'll know whether it's something that you're interested in pursuing. I always think about architecture as being about the imagining and then the realizing of, let's call it the designed environment, buildings, and the spaces between buildings, landscapes, and so on. So when you're involved in the activity of architecture, it's fundamentally a creative activity, and it's fundamentally tied up with imagining and then bringing into being the environments which serve us in terms of all the kinds of functions we go through in our everyday life, the places that we live, the places that we work, the places of leisure, places for sport. All of these can come within the remit of the architect in terms of how they're designed and how they're built. Increasingly, architecture is also tied up with the care for the built environment as we become more and more conscious of the need to reduce carbon emissions. Uh, the role of the architect will also be in looking after the, the built environment that we already have and thinking about how to make the best use of materials and the best use of the built fabric we already have to serve the needs of the future. But at its base, it involves this kind of very concerted and precise creativity. The school in UCD, the architecture program in UCD, is over 100 years old. It was first established in 1911, and that means it's the oldest and longest established program on the island. Uh, in terms of first preferences, it's the top choice in terms of schools on the island. Um, and it, it has a very high ranking in the international uh, standings. It's defined by research excellence and also by the quality and number of, of architects in practice, of practitioners who are involved in teaching on the course. It's a school that's very much rooted in its place, rooted in Dublin, rooted in its place on campus, but at the same time, it's globally connected. It's globally connected because architecture is a, an international career. Our graduates go on to work all over the world. And as a kind of preparation for that, during their study, they're involved in international field trips, and they're involved in studying abroad on an exchange program. Something close to 80% of our students will go abroad uh, for mostly for a semester to study around Europe through the Erasmus program or through numerous other international exchanges that we have with, with colleges in the US, in Asia, and in Australia. Equally, we have a lot of international students coming into our programs at undergraduate and graduate level. And it's something that we really value because that international outlook and that, that diversity and that variety of experience really enriches um, the student experience and the way that we teach and the way we learn. Also in keeping with that international profile, our program is accredited not just by the Irish Institute of Architects, but also by the UK or IBA, the Royal Institute of British Architects, and by the American NAAB, the National Architectural Accrediting Board. What this means, this triple accreditation, which is pretty much unique around the world, what it means is that our graduates are able to go and um, be, work as and register as architects um, pretty much worldwide. The scope of those three accreditations together really is a license or a sort of passport to move around the world. And architecture, as I mentioned already, is a very international uh, career. One might think of a lot of architects who are based in Ireland, but working on buildings around the world, and then a lot of Irish architects who go abroad uh, to work. Uh, among, I suppose, a case in point would be some of our most well-known alumni and uh, previous professors, uh, Sheila O'Donnell and John Toomey, we see here, who were 
highly internationally celebrated practice, winners of the RIBA gold medal, one of the most prestigious architectural awards in 2015, and responsible for buildings not just in Dublin and around and in Cork, other parts of Ireland, but also in London uh, for the LSE, the currently building another building in London for the DNA, um, and also in Belfast for the Lyric Theatre, which recently won the RAI gold medal. Um, and so practices based in Ireland and connected to UCD it really at this stage have international reputations. Irish architecture at the moment is on something of a high and our other alumni um, and adjunct professors, Shelley McNamara and Yvonne Farrell of Grafton Architects, also winners of the RIBA gold medal. And at the same year, the winners of the Pritzker Prize, probably the top honor internationally in architecture. And just recently, the winners of the Sterling Prize for a building they did in Kingston University in London. That's just uh, a couple of weeks ago. So Grafton Architects at the moment are busy on buildings in Dublin. Um, they've previously built uh, a really amazing university building in for the Bocconi University in Milan. They've built a major university in Lima, in Peru. And this is all from their base uh, in the centre of Dublin, where they're currently also at work on plans for the Dublin Central Library on Parnell Square. I suppose this is just by way of showing you, first of all, the reputation and the international scope of Irish architecture, but also the range and variety of the kind of work you might be involved in in architectural practice, from something like a library to educational buildings to civic buildings and beyond. The range of things that you're going to be involved in designing is potentially endless. Grafton Architects also curators of the Venice Biennale, the top international exhibition of architects, brings architects together from all around the world. In 2018, they curated the exhibition in Free Space, which was is, is a huge undertaking and a great honour for them to get to do this. And that included, among its exhibitors, many UCD graduates and many UCD uh, teaching staff, um, including myself and a number of my colleagues who were involved in an exhibition at the centre of that major international exposition. So when you come to study architecture in UCD, you join a kind of very distinct culture. At the moment, we're in our own um, almost mini campus on the edge of the main campus of UCD. This is Richview that you see uh, from above in this image here. And this is because we, we, we use quite a lot of space. We have, everybody is based in, in studios and everyone has a place to work uh, and a place to conduct their study over the course of the day. So there's very little moving around. One is staying largely in this set of buildings uh, and working there um, all days of the week. And so what that means is there's a very strong identity, I think, for the program. And students get to know each other very well in their own year and in other years, across the five years of the program. That being said, we're actually right now in the middle of uh, just going into the stage of, of going out to tender for a new building right in the heart of the UCD campus, right, in fact, at the entrance of the main UCD entrance. And you can see the building down on the bottom left of this aerial view. Um, right out on the N11, and we're going to be based there, and our studios are going to be up in the upper floors, looking out over Dublin Bay and beyond. And, it, and I think what's going to be great about that is that architecture from being at the edge of the campus is going to be right at its centre, and our students and their activity, their creative activity, will be right at the, really at the, a sort of a beacon, if you like, for the university, a sort of centre um, of activity. And I think that's going to be a very exciting chapter. We think we're going to be moving into that building in early 2025. So within the span of your studies, if you come and study with us uh, in UCD. At the moment, we're in these studios in Ritchie, which are also uh, great spaces. And as I mentioned, the studio is very much the heart uh, of the activity uh, that, that, of, that characterizes the program. Over 50% of your modules, of the classes that you take, will be based in the studio, will be about getting design problems or design exercises, um, things that are designed to uh, expand your skills in terms of drawing and model making, uh, working with computers and so on, and at the same time expand your ability to create designs, to respond to a particular set of parameters, a particular problem, a set of functions that need to be housed in a particular place, uh, and to put that together into coherent, creative, and comprehensive piece of design. 
one of the things that characterizes our program is right from the start, in a way, you're acting like an architect. You're involved in coming up with design solutions to given problems. And that's very much what you're going to be doing in practice. So it's not a case of taking on board huge bodies of knowledge before you're equipped to do anything. We ask you to do, to create, to act from the start and throughout your college career. And that's really how you learn. You learn by doing in the studio, in the workshop, where you get to see how materials are put together. You get to see the principles of construction, but you also get to make models and large scale experiments. So it's quite hands on. And this is something that appeals not maybe to every student, but to a lot of students, they enjoy that kind of practical aspect of the thing. There's lots of avenues through and into this kind of creative endeavor. Some of you will have studied art. Some of you will have studied technical drawing, but some of you will just be interested in the idea of coming up with creative solutions. It will come from scientific backgrounds, from social science backgrounds, from humanities backgrounds. And all of those, if you like, predispositions can feed into a successful uh, college and professional career in architecture. The structure of the program, it's, a f it's effectively a five year program broken into two steps, an undergraduate stage and then a graduate stage. And the way we structure our program is that we allow you to take four years at undergraduate level. So this means that at year one, it's a kind of foundational year. You're learning principles, you're learning skills, you're building your body of knowledge through the design studio I mentioned, and also through allied modules in history and theory, technology, environmental science. In years two and three, you develop and refine your design skills. You develop your skills and techniques you develop your understanding across those other subject areas. Then in year four, which is a kind of hinge year, you have the opportunity, as I mentioned already, to go on an international exchange for a semester. We like to start to introduce more research and um, activity and research knowledge into the design studio. We like to make the problems more open-ended, a little more complex. Uh, we like to engage with real world issues, to work with real clients, to build real projects. And then in year five, the final year, which is the MARC year, you are invited to make a design thesis, which in a way is your own statement about what you think is important in architecture and what your position within that is. It's your first attempt, if you like, to define how it is you might want to practice architecture in the world. And at the same time, you're doing a piece of written research. So the emphasis at the master stage is very much on research allied with professional standards and principles of professional practice. And after that, you move on out into the world um, of practice. So as I mentioned, it's a, it's, a, it's a program that's really characterized by learning by doing and by working in groups and working in teams and working as a class. So you develop these very close working and uh, let's say friendly relations with the people that you're in college with. Our typical intake is maybe up to 70, 65 to 70 students. So it means our whole cohort is in and around 350. So that's quite a manageable number. There's a very hands-on sort of teaching involved in that you've got a lot of people coming in from practice to teach in the design studios a couple of days a week, as well as full-time lecturers and academics who are very heavily involved in research. And the amount of contact that they have with students is really uh, quite significant uh, compared to a lot of the university programs. I'm just showing you here some examples of the kind of work you'll be producing in the early years of the program, thinking about principles of construction, principles of structure, new different kinds of drawing techniques, digital and analog, still very important, um, that you'll use in putting together and developing um, your design. Still, as I say, quite a large emphasis on the material qualities of architecture um, and on using models particularly as a means of experimenting and of developing um, designs. This is our intake from a couple of years ago, sitting out on the steps on their first day. And this is then the kind of work that they will have produced a few weeks later, by the end of semester one. This is an exhibition of first year work that you see in front of you. Hopefully, if you're able to come to campus, you'll be able to see some of that work um, in early 2022. Um, and the students at this stage are doing exercises which are where they're, which are very focused on, as I say, developing skills uh, in drawing, in model making, and in large scale making. What you see here in front of you 
is uh, the fruits of an exercise where they're designing a table. All the students are asked to design a table and then they give their design for a table to some of their colleagues. Their colleagues have to go and make that table in the workshop at full scale. They have to work out how to put all the pieces together. You're very limited in terms of the amount of pieces that you can use. And then they put all back, back together. And then at the end of it, they assemble all the tables um, and then they, everybody gathers at the end of it for a communal meal. So there's something quite nice about this idea of, first of all, everybody has an individual design and everybody's table is different. But then when you start to come together and work as a team, you're able to work on, on a design and bring it to fruition. And then you understand that ultimately the role of the design, even something as humble as a table, is it has a social function, ultimately. It's about bringing people together uh, in order to participate in the simplest of functions or the most elaborate uh, of rituals. And that principle still holds even as the nature of architectural practice is continuing um, to change. These are some, uh, just to mention that in stages two and three, as I say, we go on field trips. Uh, it's very important when you're studying architecture that you go and look at buildings, both in Ireland and elsewhere, that you visit and study and, and learn from uh, what has been done already. We're always building on the knowledge and the ideas that architecture has already absorbed, if you like, into its repertoire. We also take the opportunity to make study drawings and survey drawings of some of the places that we go. As you move through those years two and three, the scale that you're thinking at, the scale of the city, the scale of the neighborhood, the size of the programs that you're working with, maybe a small, a small housing project, a civic building, everything starts to become a little more complex, more elements to think about and you're required to bring things to a greater degree um, of completion. So you're thinking not just about a sort of rough idea about a building, but you're really thinking about how it sits in its context, what it's like to be in it and to walk through it, how is it built, what materials are used, how are they put together. All of these elements are absolutely critical to the making of any successful piece of architecture, however humble or however grand. And all of them are part of the way that you study. And then as you move into the MR, into years four and then five, and the scale again expands to take on large, complex urban and regional issues um, to take in different kind of formats, including reports, feasibility studies, surveys, a greater range of the kind of work that you might be undertaking when you're in practice. And then as you move to do your thesis, the opportunity, if you like, to synthesize everything you've learned and all your own particular interests and concerns and develop a piece of work that sort of brings all of that together and also serves as a stepping stone for your next, um, for your first forays into practice. Um, you're seeing a thesis project from a few years ago here in these images. And here's another one, There's somebody working in a suburban context. And you can see that there's sort a of range of techniques that people use, the sorts of drawings they make. These are all digital drawings and become more complex and more refined as you move into the master's level program. Worth mentioning just in closing that it is a busy program. You will be working pretty long hours during during the semesters, but the work is is active work. As I mentioned at the start and a couple of times, you're learning by doing. You're involved in creative projects and you always have your own work. Right from the start, you're being asked to make a response. You're being invited to contribute something to the conversation. So you're not a passive absorber of knowledge, you're an active creator. And if, so if that's something that appeals to you, then I think UCD architecture could be a good fit. And we do also have fun along the way. And then just to mention in closing, a couple of our recent graduates, actually they just came and talked to and the school today, which is why they're on my mind. Um, you, this, and just thinking again, back to this changing nature of the architectural profession. So Rachel Hollihan, who you see here, was a graduate from about uh, five years ago, who's now working in London. And she was uh, named AJ, this uh, a magazine, the Architects Journal, Sustainability Champion for 2020. And the work she's doing that she was describing in her practice is, is, is about looking at how materials can be reused um, when buildings are being taken down to build new buildings. So the idea that the, the building that's been taken down is a resource and that there's lots and lots of materials there that you can think about ways in which you can absorb 
in, sorry, in reuse those materials in the new project. Very complex thing to try to do, but absolutely critical in terms of reducing the carbon footprint associated with construction. Construction at the moment accounts for something between 30 and 40 percent uh, of carbon emissions worldwide. And so architecture is fundamental and we really are critical to thinking about how it is that we're going to reduce those emissions significantly. And Rachel is really at the forefront of a lot of that work in her practice in London. Um, and then very recently, Ashley Mulligan in her project last year, uh, her master's thesis did uh, a, a quite similar project where she was looking at the sort of an idea of a circular economy again in the construction industry again looking at how you could take elements from buildings that were about to be demolished or falling into disuse and you could come up with new ways of reconfiguring them in new buildings again the same idea but what's interesting there is that Ashling now has moved into practice she's working with craft and architects actually and and she's she was saying how straight away there's an application and an appetite for the kind of thinking that she'd been doing in her thesis as she moves out into practice. So architecture is an evolving profession. It's responding always to society's needs. It tries to act responsibly, ethically, and for the common good. And it's fundamentally bound up with, uh, with creativity and with um, a kind of concerted creativity that, that produces the designed and built environments in which we go about our, our lives. So hopefully I've given you a flavor there of what it is that you might expect. And hopefully I'll see some of you um, in UCD architecture in the next in the next year. Thank you. Thank you to Hugh for that insightful talk. I hope it gave you great insights into our architecture course here in UCD. If you do have questions, please head over to our virtual architecture stand where we have staff and students waiting to chat with you and answer your questions. Thank you for tuning in and have a good day.